So we need to determine the maximum weight of this crate that can be suspended from these three cables here. And we have the criteria that each one of these cables at maximum can hold 250 pounds of force. So this is a 3D force equilibrium problem with a failure criteria. A big chunk of this problem is being able to start with your position vector, take that position vector, divide it by its own magnitude, that'll shrink it down to a unit vector, which is just a vector of length one, and then take that unit vector and multiply it by the force that is activated in this cable, and that will lengthen it into the force vector. So I have a video on that. Check that out if you want a from zero explanation on it. I'll go through those steps a little bit quicker. So we have to add up all the forces. The sum of these forces must equal zero. This little ring here is not moving at all. So it has zero acceleration. So the sum of all these forces must equal zero. I have the force in the AC rope, I have the force in the AB rope, and I have the force in the AD rope. And of course I can't forget the weight of that crate. So I'll start with our vector, our force vector AC. I need to first take, make a position vector that goes from A to C, and, can I, and I can do that by doing my final coordinates, C minus my initial. A. I want to make this a position vector from A directed towards C. So I do final point minus initial point. The coordinates of point C are going to be 2 in the positive x, 0 in the y direction, and 3 in the positive z direction. And the coordinates of A will be 0 in the x direction, 6 in the positive y direction, and 0 in the z direction. So I just have to do vector c minus vector a, component by component subtraction here. And doing that will get me 2 in the x direction, negative 6 in the y, and positive 3 in the z. And I can find the length of this position vector by doing the Pythagorean theorem. So I'm going to take the 7 and divide it into each component as well as the magnitude of our position vector here and that will basically shrink our position vector down into a vector in the same direction but just who has a length of 1 and that by definition is a unit vector just a vector of length 1. So now I'm going to take a, another scalar and I'm going to multiply it into each component of this unit vector and that scalar will be the, the magnitude of the force in this AC cable. We don't know what that exact number is but that's no problem, I'll just keep it as an unknown. And there we go. That force vector is done. It's not completely known because we don't know the actual strength of that force, but we'll figure that out later. So we'll do the same exact process for our other two position force vectors. So I'll do force AB next, so I have to make a vector from A going to B, so a position vector going from A to B, and I can find that by doing final minus initial the coordinates of B look like that's going to be negative 3 in the x direction, a 0 in the y direction, and a positive 2 in the z direction. And of course the same coordinates of A from last time. So now I'll just do the vector component subtraction here. I can do the magnitude, the sum of the squares of the components there. So negative 3 squared is 9, plus a 36 makes a 45, 
45 plus a 4 is going to be another 49, and radical of 49 is 7. So same length as last time. And I'll take that 7 and divide it into each component, as well as the magnitude of this position vector. And the result will be that unit vector in the same direction. So now I can take the actual force that is in that rope and multiply it into that unit vector. And that will extend that unit vector into the length of the force vector in the AB direction. All right, so here is our finished force vector for the AB cable. And we'll do the exact same thing for the AD cable, but I'll just uh, do the work and throw it up on the screen for you so you can just make sure you got it. All right, so here's our finished force vector for the cable AD. So we have our three forces here. Just got to make the weight vector. So that's going to be pretty easy. That weight force is just going downwards in the z direction. So zero in the x, zero in the y, and I'll just say a minus w in the z. All right, so let me just put all these force vectors together real quick. So the sum of all these four forces must equal zero. So let's just add up the x, the y, and the z components of these four forces set equal to zero. So here are our three sum forces equations. Just take a second and make sure you're good with that. So here comes the failure criteria portion of this problem. So we want this weight to be as big as possible. And ideally that means that each one of our three tension force vectors will be operating at its maximum capacity. I mean that's probably how we're going to get the most weight in here. But sadly we're really never able to have each one of our ropes operating at its best. It just never ends up like that. 99% of the time, only one of our ropes is operating at its maximum limit. So what we're going to do is we're going to choose one of our ropes at random and just say that, okay, hey, AC is operating at its max of 250. We'll plug in 250 for AC. We'll do our math, solve for the forces in AB, AD, and the weight. And if any of those other force vectors are operating over 250 pounds, we know that that cannot be the case and that AC cannot be operating at its maximum. So let's do that. So we'll first assume that AC is the lucky rope that gets to be operating at its best. So we'll put 250 in for each one of our ACs, which leaves us with only three unknowns and three equations. So at this point, we can solve this system for these three unknowns. And me personally, I'll just throw all this stuff into a matrix. And you, you might want to get good with this matrix approach because we're about to maximize AB and AD as well. So we're about to do this process two more times. So it's really useful to be fast with just letting the math do its thing by just plugging all the stuff into a matrix. And I have a video on that in case you want to learn how. So if I run that math and solve my unknowns, I get 166.67 the force in AB, that's okay. I get negative 119 pounds for the force in AD. And something's definitely not right right there. That negative means that instead of this force acting this way, it's really acting this way. 
which is impossible. This rope right here can only tug, it can only pull up. Like that's how ropes work. You can't push anything with the rope. So something's definitely shifty here. I'm going to trash this one and move on to the next one. So next, let's assume that the cable AB is operating at its max at 250. We'll plug that into force AB variable and solve for force AC, force AD, and the weight. So if I do that, I'll get 375 and 893 for force AC and AD. These are way too big, way over our 250 pound limit. So this is also not what's going on. And last but not least, we'll assume that the cable AD is getting to operate at its maximum. And if we carry out that math, we'll get 105 for FAC, that's safe. 70 for FAB, that's safe. So my two other cables are safe, which means this is actually what is going on. This is our maximum weight that this crate can be. If this crate was any bigger, if it was like 266 pounds, my force AD here would go above 250, and then force AD would break. So force AD is the lucky cable that gets to be operating at its best, and the two other cables are safely below 250. So our maximum weight is 265 pounds. And these values here are the forces in the cables. All right, two essential concepts here. One, transforming a position vector into a force vector. Uh, then, of course, doing your sum forces x, y, z, Newton's second law. And then concept two, the failure criteria concept. So I hope both of these concepts made sense in the context of this problem. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, and I will do my best to answer them.